think we're really interested in the future of um, pharmacy because there's, I think, been a lot of uh, tension in the profession and a lot of um, concern in the profession about what the future will be. Um, pharmacy probably since automation of manufacture of pharmaceuticals has changed. Um, you go back to the day of the corner shop pharmacy where you came and you said, I've got this cough, and the pharmacist goes, I'll make something for you. You know, you make up this nice mixture or, or whatever. Um, very individualised, personalised medicines, uh, a lot of hands-on manufacturing. You know, we're probably making 60% of the medicines ourselves, maybe more. Uh, we probably make less than 2% now. And most of those are creams and, and things like that. Very simple manufacturing that we do now. Most of it is um, manufactured medicines uh, that we get off the shelf. So the role has, has changed. Um, so we've gone down this pathway that's led us into, you know, what's perceived as a very retail model. And so we're now um, in this in-between position where uh, the broader health community sometimes looks at us as retailers um, rather than health professionals. So we're, we're sort of seen as health professionals in a retail environment um, and that often is seen as a limitation to us actually being um, invited to participate or engaged in, in broader activities in the healthcare system. So people go, oh, but you're only interested in the money, um, you've got a commercial interest or a pecuniary interest, uh, you're only doing that because you're going to make money out of it, uh, which is really unfair, um, considering that pharmacists, particularly in the community setting, are the most accessible health professional. They deal with lots of minor ailment and first contact um, medical things. You know, when I worked in day-night pharmacies, yeah, uh, you'd have people coming in that have got semi-severed limbs, uh, fingers, whatever, because, you know, it's after hours, you're open, they want to come to you because, you know, A, they can't get into, or it's difficult to see a medical practitioner, they don't necessarily want to go to the hospital, they want to just see if somebody can fix it and they've got their finger hanging off. Um, so, you, you know, you're dealing with a lot of, yeah, that triaging and, and first off healthcare. Uh, and, you know, we don't get paid for any of that. Um, the re remuneration for a pharmacist is based on sale of a product or dispensing of a medicine. And so we've been really locked into this idea that the only way that we get value for what we're contributing is linked to a tube of paste or, you know, a packet of pills. Um, not for what's in my brain or what I can contribute to you. So I get spend an hour talking to you, uh, I get nothing for that. So there's limited acknowledgement of our sort of cognitive input. Uh, it's really a physical sticking a label in a box is how we value it. So people are really concerned that that's not sustainable. If you can get a robot who can dispense a script in seven seconds, um, faster these days, um, if you can have technicians that do dispensing, um, who are people who have less training, um, why do you need pharmacists? If nurses can do it or doctors can do it, um, why do you need pharmacists? So the profession themselves are getting really anxious uh, about, you know, what are we going to do? Um, so yeah, it's, it's very interesting. So prescribing is a role, you know, working in GP super clinics where you're not dispensing a script. You know, you're talking to patients about their medicines or you're reviewing what medicines they're taking and saying, hey, doctor, you know, let's talk about what they're taking and what do you think about changing this or, you know, but, yeah, it's a big leap, you know, when you've gone from working in a community pharmacy setting to going and communicating with, with doctors and making recommendations and standing up and saying, this is what I think you should do. Uh, that's a whole pile of other training. Um, that you might get at uni but you may not have used for 10 years, how confident are you going to be that you're the guy that's got the knowledge? And so it comes back to that confidence that you're the expert. Um, and so I think, you know, we're in a really interesting time because um, nobody else really would want to go and do the job of a community pharmacist. You're not flogging for nothing. You know, some of those guys are dispensing four or five hundred scripts a day. Um, 
you know, and there's diminishing margins, they're paying high rental prices for, you know, floor space and, you know, they're, they're trying to have a business model that allows them to stay professional, uh, but they're caught in the same retail environment as, you know, Meyer or Coles. Um, they're in a really tough spot uh, and people want them to be health professionals. It's hard. You know, and that's the majority of our profession is still sitting in that spot. So, you know, we're, we're trying to deal with that. And then we've got graduates who, who will say, well, I'll never get a job in pharmacy because there's no jobs for pharmacists. So it's really tricky time. They keep saying that people are always going to be sick and they're always going to be taking medicines. And uh, on the sheer basis of that, you will always have a job. Yeah, I mean, there is different sort of takes on it, and I think that causes a lot of tension, and I think it depends um, in some respect from what perspective you come from. Um, I think, you know, PSA's um, position is sort of looking at everybody. Um, the Pharmacy Guild, for example, is an owner's organisation, so, you know, you, you can't be a member unless you own a pharmacy, so, you know, they're taking the business perspective and so their perspective um, you know is about you know being a better business person and you know it's about better business models and it's about being more effective at, at that process uh, you know and SHPA has got their perspective so I think you know individual organizations will always have their own sort of lens that they look through uh, and that you know does bring up some tension and some disagreement um, within the professional organisations. It gets heated from time to time. It says you can't see what I'm thinking, you don't understand my perspective. Um, but I think, you know, in the end, you know, we want pharmacy to be a vibrant, successful um, profession. You know, we want it to be here in 500 years like it's been, you know, since the apocrypharies and the, and the, and the druggists split you know, uh, years and years ago and the GPs went that way and the pharmacists went that way, you know. We want them to exist like they did um, back there and I think, you know, at the heart of heart you can see that there's a future. Um, I think what we have to be able to do is acknowledge um, difference um, and be prepared to see a future where there's roles for different people doing different things and I think staying with the current business model may be appropriate for some people, but there needs to be a preparedness by the broader profession to accept um, people developing into different roles. So accept people developing into advanced practitioners who might prescribe or might work in a GP clinic or, uh, you know, might be working, you know, um, in an outpatient department in the hospital. You know, these people who may be super specialists um, practitioners. We need to accept that sort of diversity within the profession, this idea that we're all homogenous and we're all the same, because we, we, we're generalists by training, um, allowing people to evolve into specialties. Um, other professions have done it, but we've kind of resisted. Because community pharmacy is very generalist and because in this country it is the majority of our practice, We've kept this kind of feeling that everybody should be able to do everything and kind of resisted that idea that you can evolve and have a, a special person, that idea that you're a specialist or you're a consultant. People kind of, you know, tend to tall poppy those people and try and knock them down off the ivory tower. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's necessarily good. And, and it's hard for people to, to sort of embrace that. And if we don't, we're buggered. I think, you know, we will lose the profession because you need to diversify. Um, any business, any good business diversifies. If you put all your eggs in one basket, um, eventually you drop the basket and you're stuffed. Mm. I think the future of, of pharmacy, um, unless you're a, a, a niche business, uh, you know, your you're, you're small sort of um, privately owned pharmacies aren't going to go very far. 
Um, I think it's all about price now for people. They know they can get a better price. So you've got to be competitive in price, um, but you've got to have the service. So you're either going to be um, extremely cheap with no service, or you're going to be relatively cheap with an amount of service. And that's how you've got to sort of differentiate um, yourself in the market. And by becoming a chain, you know, um, that helps you with price. Um, but then having a niche within that chain makes makes you makes you a place of of need, you know, a place for people to go.